Okay. Talking tunes, and we're here. I'm Matt Carrasco here with Mr. Greg Roberts, the G-Man. Yo, the baby, man, yo! The only man in Muskegon where you just say, do you know G? And they say, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Isn't that sweet? And then we have the beautiful and talented Britta. No, oh, ask her. Come Britta Cleveland, but you can, oh yeah, just say it's Britta. Everybody just says, <laughs> Britta, sir! Anyway. And then we have... The horses? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Paul. I know Paul for what, 37 years, something like Probably, that. Probably give or give or take. Wow. Well, anyway, so Paul, so Paul Phillips goes by Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. Yo. <laughs> Been DJing since the 50s. Peter Tripp, the interviewed third Elvis. The only one that can actually say they interviewed Elvis. There you go. Oh, right I there. know. There's a few others around yet. Is there? We haven't all tied off yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that is left. so cool. Gosh, that's cool. And then, Britta, could you could you introduce our special guest? Here? I would love to. Oh, I, I I had the pleasure of meeting this lovely lady downtown Muskegon at the Century Club shops this past summer, and she's fascinating. Her name is Jean Drew, and she's a graphologist consultant. And what that means is, well, you know what, Jean, I'm going to let you describe what there that actually is. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. A graphologist is a handwriting expert, and that means that you analyze handwriting. And it is a science, and a lot of people don't realize that it's a proven, proven science. And um, so you look at uh, what a person writes, and you look at the form, the movement, and the color. And the color is, can I feel it on the back? So wow. that's how deep, you know, oh. how much pressure the person is. Oh, okay. Lord, You're an aggressive Jesus writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. Okay, so tonight, uh, myself and the gentleman here tonight, we've written down some samples of our game. Yeah. 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 I back, oh, I back down. down. <laughs> He's, we're all afraid how crazy she's going to find us to be well, <laughs> from yeah, we can pretty much, I, Greg and I can pretty much analyze Paul, so it's not a problem. We can tell you all about him. So. <laughs> we so, both don't want to know. <laughs> we can't do that on TV or oh, radio. That's, that's true. Well, Gene, we're so glad that you're here with us tonight, and I think it is truly, truly fascinating. So we're excited. We're really excited to hear what you have to say and find out a little bit more about this really cool talent that you have, this profession. I think it's extremely cool. Thank you. I mean, it, it is learned. <laughs> Maybe it's a talent. Maybe the delivery well, of it is a talent. Well, it is a talent, but it, this isn't the only one of your talents that you have. Um, from We were just chatting before we got on the air here. Come to find out, Gene is also a radio personality. And wow. you've Years been on, ago. And, well, once you have it in your blood, you always have it in your oh, blood. Yeah. Okay, Gene. And she's been on television many times, and she's analyzed. How many How many people do you think you've analyzed already? Oh, my God. Um, I don't know, but I know when I did. I'll just give you an example. I did. Uh, Chamber asked me to do their Christmas party. Oh. And I, <clears throat> they thought it'd be two hours. I analyzed 74 individuals, wow. one after the other. Wow. <laughs> I was there for a very long time. So I have no idea. Thousands. No, I was, I was, Thousands. Talking, I was talking to Kathy, and Kathy said, you literally travel all over. Uh, corporations bring you in to analyze uh, right. writing. Right, right. That, the majority of my work early on was with corporations. And then I started working with individuals, and then I started getting interested in children's, um, even children's scribbles, which uh, is this, there's its movement and its form, and sometimes it's color, or literally it's color. It's so what, what the, will you just come by this? It's just a no, feeling no, no, you no, had? I, no, no, I have studied intensely well, you've with, studied, you've studied, with okay. European graphologists, and uh, where in Europe it was always respected. And it wasn't so much respected here in the States until, I, I would say, 20 years ago. So let me ask you a question. So sure. you're, you're at a restaurant, and the waitress writes a smiley face and thank you and all that. And you look at the writing and go, oh, no, it's Charles Manson. <laughs> oh, no, I, I will tell you that there, there was somebody who wanted me to do criminals in the and so I said, well, let's look at it and see. And um, by the third handwriting I was given, and I wasn't told who they were, 
I couldn't do it anymore. It was too, uh, it almost affected yeah. me right. physically. Yeah. yeah. Just, just taking it in. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that could be quite traumatic. Yes. Yeah. Whether we're outright, it won't be taking much in. I know. <laughs> like you know, I just noticed about you, Jean Ann, you've got beautiful handwriting. I just looked oh, at that and I'm like, look. You, you know what? It's beautiful. It is beautiful handwriting. handwriting. There are several things <laughs> that I have never heard in my life. Fair enough. Like, that's yeah. one of them, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to hear it today. You have beautiful handwriting is one. Yeah. It's one thing I've never heard before. Okay. Well, you have some beautiful traits. Oh, see? 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 So, is it out, so should I be first or? Yeah. She's got the paper in her hand. She has the paper in her hand. Yes, I'm holding that paper. First, so, I want to say, say thanks to Kathy Ecker for giving me a call. Yeah, yeah thank you, Kathy. I appreciate you being over here. And we thank Kathy. Did we say about the way Kathy, Kathy's, she's yeah, sick? Yeah, she's, she's not feeling well, so she's not here today. So Get well, we Kathy. Kathy, we love you, baby. Get well, Emily. Bob, hopefully you're on the way. Like sick people. What would all that? Tis the season, though, you know. Tis the season. Tis the season. I'm sorry, so go ahead, please. <laughs> Greg Roberts. Okay. Well, the first thing that I notice is that you like words. You like words. And you may have, um, like there's several things here that you may have been interested in. It could have been sports. It could have been music. And it could have been creative writing. So oh. I'm not sure which of those three you had an interest in. All, all in three. Your... All three. <laughs> all really? three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Okay. Um, you are. You have a good memory, and you really know how to behave in public. I don't know about that one. Well, in other words, you're good at putting on. He is. An act. Yeah, yeah. And it can yeah. be effective. It can be very effective. <laughs> so far, 100%. Yeah, so far, 100%. Okay. Yeah. You are uh, basically uh, more private than people might expect. But you don't pers you don't really hide anything. It's just that you have this act that you, that you do. And it, uh, yeah. You don't like people who have temper. And when you're, when something's important to you, you want to have the last word. That's uh, that's very important. You uh, keep going. <laughs> you okay. haven't missed yet. You listen to almost everything that's going on around you. You are, um, I would say, you use more insight than you use vision. Um, so you're a fairly insightful person. Your goals are definitely future oriented. And you have some goals that are actually almost, some people would say, well, why do you think that, why do you think that's going to happen? Or why do you think you can do that? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> you, you have a good sense of humor, too. And this thing about words comes back. And you don't, um, I don't know, let's see. I don't know what I'm saying. Say it. No, well, no, I, sometimes I have to figure out how to say what I'm seeing. Um, you get irritable when people don't pick up on something. Yep. Quickly. Okay, yep. right away. Um, you are tired tonight. Exactly. And, um, yeah. And, but you're going to listen and you're going to, you'll never be without your humor. Some part of you is very idealistic, so you get disappointed in people from time to time. And again, you have some good digital dexterity. And that's this humor it just comes through all the time. Yeah. It's very good. Wow. That's awesome. What? Wow. years now, you know, you know, 35 for me, about uh, 40 for him. Yeah. And pretty much hit you right on the square of the head. Paul, what do you think? You've known me the longest in this room. I'm smiling because I can, some of the things she said, I could tell a lot of stories about. <laughs> 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 that go right along with what she's been saying. Okay. Yeah. All right, so everybody, again, we are here with Jean Drew, who is a graphologist consultant, and she is an expert. She's analyzing all of our handwriting here tonight. So it's awesome. Thanks, yeah. Jane. Well, you're quite well. Oh, it's def I... definitely Britta's turn next. Oh, yeah. no. Is that, is that who we're doing next? Oh, All right, you want to be last? I'm nervous. 
<laughs> Gene. <laughs> well, let me see here. Well, you are a visual person, and uh, you are uh, analytical, and you um, you can be very private, very private. You have good common sense. You also would like to have a last word. I've got two people here who would like to have a last word. <laughs> Which makes for a hard radio program. Uh, <laughs> I think the same thing. Uh, I guess you and I have to be quiet out yeah. <laughs> You have a, a pretty good imagination. You, you use your mind a lot. And you use your, rely on your mind more than you do your feelings or even your intuition. You have intuition, but it looks like you re rely on your mind a little bit more. Uh, did I say common sense? You don't right now have, like some of your goals are being uh, reevaluated. You're not, you're not uh, following through on some things that you thought you would before. Very short term. Man, is she rather her email or what? Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> I know, you would rather mind. give direction than take it. It's a promise. <laughs> That's true. From my perspective, it definitely is true. Um, you do listen, and uh, you have a good sense of self. A lot of people have more of a need for social acceptance, but you have need to be able to accept yourself more than social acceptance. Persistent? And again, the energy that you're showing here is again a little tired. Uh, yeah. A little tired. And you don't want to be generous until you know that what you're being generous with is going to be useful, valuable. She's smiling. I don't know what that smile is saying. <laughs> uh, let's see. And you like to put the processes together. It could be people or it could be processes or something. But you, you want to blend things so that, that they work well together. Okay? She's not saying a word. Did you notice that? I noticed that, yeah. I'm say it. Yeah, I just want to know what, what you think so far. Yeah, what do you think? I'm thinking you know me just too well, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm actually um, stunned by some of it when uh, some of it maybe I didn't even realize about myself. But you know what you're talking about more than I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> well, and you also, um, you, you also can divert attention away from something if you yeah. think that it's not going in the right direction. So you have that ability kind of take things and move them around a little bit. I, that is, yes. I, I Uncomfortable situations, I try to yes. add humor or something. Yeah. maybe drop a tray. <laughs> 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 Whatever it takes. Yeah. <laughs> and you like to persuade people. I would say that's the, that's the next. Well, 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 I didn't know that. <laughs> that. Oh, oh, that's okay. a little bit of a surprise. Really? Are yeah. you kidding? Really? No, really. Well, I didn't. Persuader. I didn't know you were a persuader. Yes, yeah, she wants to persuade people. Well, I am in radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it goes with the job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could see that just from the way she was talking and the, re the actions she had when she sat down here. Persuade me to do this, persuaded me to get closer, you know. Okay, okay. That's true. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Very good. You know, like she was persuading well, me. Well, she was persuading me to get over here to this chip. Yeah. Okay. I'm running this show. I'm running this room, people. <laughs> Thank God we got somebody. No, right, right. I'm totally kidding, you guys. You know that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm totally kidding. And uh, the other thing is you're learning to say no to the right people at the right time, but you don't always do it. That is so true. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Oh, wow. my gosh. Wow. Okay, we're two, amazing. Two for two. Amazing. Let's take a break because Bob walked in the studio, so we want to get him to write some stuff down, okay. too. And, uh, get yeah, I saw somebody also. walk by there. Yeah, so we're going to take a quick break. Talking tunes. This is the only DJ place in the yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. 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 only. Yeah. And welcome back to Talking Tunes. Is um, our better known one hundred point nine FM. We are here with Jean, and we're going to take it. Let her take the show because 
Yeah, she's right on. Jean, take it away. Okay, what, who am I doing next? Uh, I guess me. Uh, I want to, unless you want to do Bob first, that's that's no, fine. No. Way. <coughs> Let's see, because this is, uh, this is, yeah. This we is difficult. Do, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I knew I that was wait, coming. I don't yeah. wait for this one. <laughs> Yay. Uh, you have a tendency to take on too much responsibility and leave things up to other people. Yeah, um, yeah. You have uh, a lot of insight, a lot of things going through and uh, perceptions, and you don't always talk about them, but you have them. You can be stubborn. <laughs> Not me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm just <laughs> I'll shut up. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, you want to be in a leadership position. Yep. And um, yeah. And you like to uncover things. You like to kind of dig down. Okay. Bring something up. You like people who handle uh, being in the public and that kind of responsibility. You like. You, there's some people that you admire in that way. You have a lot of curiosity. You also like words. Um, they're very clever uh, with your uh, the way you present something to people. You kind of, I don't know, you put a twist to it. I'm pretty twisted. Well, that is exactly what I said. Um, your goals are more immediate. You like things to set a goal and then reach it fairly quickly. You don't set a lot of long-range goals. But boy, the ideas that run through your mind. That's so scary. <laughs> Anything you illegal? Also, yeah. <laughs> you also like to be persuasive. And um, I just have to glance at this one because it's so different. I mean, there's so much more. Words. Well, there's three of you that like words, so I guess this is a good place to be on radio. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, that works. Uh, when you do make decisions, you follow through on them um, yourself. You don't uh, give them over to somebody else. Did I say you were stubborn? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah you mentioned that back then. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she, she, she keeps seeing that through your right eye. Right. Yeah. That's right, I'm sorry. Yeah, my kids can tell you that one. Uh, but that leadership thing is very important. In um, digital dexterity, you have, and you do, uh, you do listen. You listen to a lot of things that are going on. You don't let people know that you heard them all the time, but you listen very carefully. My poor wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, she wants to call me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other session. Get, get a little yeah. perspective here. And you also like to have the last word. That's uh, that's important. You got a whole group of last <laughs> words around here. Oh, right? no. <laughs> you and I might not get anything in at all. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Do you have any questions? I'm really curious. She hit 19 points on you, and she was right on every I know, point. I know, unfortunately, yeah. Do you, do you have any uh, disagreements or anything? You're, not, not really, no. Denial on any of those? No, unfortunately, no, I don't. Well, I, well, wait a minute, she's got more. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but I mean, the ideas that could come to you are really incredible. You know, a lot. They just like drop into your mind. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he does. He does do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, the stubborn doesn't go away, but you have a big heart. <laughs> I only have a big heart, I guess. That's all it that matters. Right? Yeah, that's you got a big, matters. stubborn heart. That's all that matters. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. 21 points. She was 21 for 21. And that was that was uh, Paul Phillips reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen from the choir over here. Uh, so uh, now it's Bob's turn. Yeah. Uh, what, are you, I, what are you expecting? I'm expecting uh, accuracy. Accuracy. And by the way, we have Bob Acker here. Oh, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You are a self-made person. You did not um, really rely on any of the feedback you got from your parents, good, bad, right, or wrong. You just made your own decisions about yourself and who you wanted to be and how you wanted to be. Uh, 
Well, it's a combination of curiosity and get on with it. <laughs> it's just like you <laughs> but, uh, He says that to me all the time. Get on with it, Oscar. <laughs> Very decisive. Very decisive person. Well, that's it. And that's all we have for you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, curiosity and very, very particular attention to details. You really can count details. Yeah, that's big time accurate there. Yeah. And um, when you set a goal, you really expect it to actually um, end up better. Than you imagine, or the way you imagine, maybe I'm not sure, but better than you, you know, uh, really expected. You listen uh, to people that you respect; otherwise, your ears are not, you know, you don't care. But you have to respect the people. And <laughs> you don't. You don't like a predictable day. You'd like things to kind of go take their own, you know, however it goes. But you remain in control, and that's because you're able to make these decisions. It's amazing. Very, very decisive. Very. We talked about form, movement, and color, and this is the first one that has the intensity on it that I can feel. And so that is, you know how to make an impression when you want to make an impression. So that's that's a goal of yours to to have what you do be meaningful. Let's put it that way. Okay. Woo! See now, I don't know him that well, so I got to take your word for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Greg and I know him pretty well, and yeah, pretty much spot on. What do you think, Greg? About right on. I just want to know what do you think about the first part about the parents you make oh, right. you be. Yeah, I don't know about that part. Everything else she was fine. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, would, I would say that, you know, the, the choices I've made in my life are pretty much the things that I wanted to do yeah. and yeah. go after the things that I want to go after. I don't I don't really tend to listen to people for, like, career advice or you should do this or you should work there or whatever. I just... And that started in your childhood that you didn't uh, listen. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm sure... <laughs> well, you, well, you may have pretended to listen, but you had your own. Did your parents ever say... You know, we think you should be in radio and do sports, or no? No, my parents were just incredibly encouraging, were they? supportive. Okay. Uh, they would they would never tell me I shouldn't do something yeah. or or not to try something. So they, they were always very supportive. Yeah, I don't see what, what anything that was negative. It's just that you are right. your own self. I call it a self-made okay. person. Yeah. You weren't interested. I make my own messes. Yeah, you right. weren't interested in living up to someone else's expectations. You wanted to live up to your own. You go for what you what you're after. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you came to me, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this a typical signature? Yes. That, that's how I would sign. However, yeah. And so, this just says, uh, I don't care if you know who I am or not. <laughs> that's very true. I, I could have told. I could. You could have told. I could have told. <laughs> Okay. I saw all that signature and I said, whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why I'm in radio, because you know, you're, you're not as well known in radio as you would be in some other mediums. Yeah. But I don't care. You know, I don't Cat Kathy talks about me way more than I do. Like she she likes to brag about me being on the radio yeah. and doing the broadcasting, yeah. which is awesome. I love to have her do that for me and support me and she's just really proud of me and all that. But I never I never tend to tell people what I do or share that. It's just like People, if people listen to me, that's great. If they enjoy listening to the games, that's great. But if they don't, or I don't care if I meet a stranger, and I don't care if they know what I do or what I don't do, or it doesn't bother me. Well, Greg and I are proud of you, and we kind of want to give you a group hug right now. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> just saying kumbaya, but yeah. maybe later. Yeah, stay later. Right. Stay right. Gene, now, but I know you're still looking at no. Bob, but I, I just, I, in Drew's um, counseling, tell us, a little bit more about yourself. Tell people how maybe they can get in touch with you, um, or where you're at in your life right now. Well, um, where am I at in my life right now? I am now a, 
more of a resident of Muskegon, Michigan than I was uh, for for the last 24 years. I have been driving back and forth to Chicago, and I would be here two and a half days a week, and the rest of the time I had a, an apartment, a big apartment in Chicago, and I had five children, so there were different things to adjust to, and I had an office there, and I still go back to Chicago uh, twice a month to see clients that I have there. Um, I do a lot of um, helping corporations hire the right people for not just the job, but for the company, and what the atmosphere is, and who do they have to work with so that they blend in. So the resume, today, you know, there's so much stuff about resumes, you can you hire somebody to, to fix your resume. But I just like to hire people so that they're going to be an asset to themselves and the company. Now, is that difficult to do with when when it's typewritten? Or, you know, no, is, is there very much that's turned in that's handwritten anymore? No, but I ask, I mean, the companies that have hired me ask them for a handwritten. Okay, so that's you're like the next level. So yes. after they've kind of sorted through some of it, then they're going to ask you to take it to the next level and right and help analyze them further. Right. Okay. Or they yeah. Or they even have them send in a handwritten um, part message of, of why they want that particular. Right. Okay. So we're looking at some of your studies, LSI, um, some studies in New York. Uh, Washington, D.C. How does someone that can analyze stuff so accurately be from Washington, D.C. and learn anything from Washington, D.C.? It's it's, I'm just so amazed of your training because you are spot on. And my second question is, now I want you to look at those other, the other one, the Emily Roberts one, because oh, she's okay. going to be taking pictures of us. And the other one, she's going to be teaching us how to do a podcast. Can you give us quick words on them? And the third question is going to be, now that you have married for one first. Well, because I, 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 I wanted to think, okay. it, you know, it's like a, it's like a gumball. Okay. All right. Got to put it all okay. together. Um, now that you see and have all the writings, what are the pros and cons of this group being together? Oh, don't do that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Now, I have, I have to take about out. a half hour and lay them all out. And just <laughs> but you're all, you're all very much individualistic. You know, very wow. different. If you were too similar, it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Wow. Yeah. So, Emily, right? Yes. And... Um, Emily is a very, can adjust to almost any group of, of people around. She's very uh, outgoing and uh, she's pr a private person, but she is present to a lot of different kinds of people. And so she's, she's good socially. A very idealistic person. Very idealistic. And can be a little stubborn. But uh, insightful, very responsible and uh, anxious to keep things moving. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she does listen, by the way. She does listen. To me. She has a big heart. She's very, very, uh, when she wants to be open, she's very open. Very open, not hiding anything. Okay? Yeah. And she liked that. She likes to establish something. I, I don't know. I have it's not a lot of writing here, mm -hmm. so maybe you understand what it's. Oh, yeah. And and she also learns to has to learn to stay stay no to the right people at the right time. She does not. Do Especially that. Like, the Yeah. I, I was like, I'm, I'm recording this, so she. Oh, okay. Can say it. <laughs> okay. But uh, she's got she's got good visual attention to detail and a lot of manual dexterity. Lots of manual dexterity. Do a lot with their hands. Okay? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well. Uh, okay. <laughs> well this right is out. this is Savannah. Yes. Do you want me to do that one too then? Right now. Um, 
again, this is someone who may uh, be interested in uh, creative writing, um, dance, and um, very precise, listens carefully. How old is this person? 21. Okay, because I say they're not, they haven't really gone out into the world yet. <laughs> um, Mother and father, uh, both both accepting influence from both parents. And uh, visual attention to detail, very precise, very accurate. Sees a lot of things that other people miss. Strong goals for that age. Is this, this person isn't left-handed, are they? She's right. She's right-handed, okay. but she's kind of amateur. Yes, because she may have been. Because they kind of change him. She school. was left-handed when yeah. she yes. was young. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You broke her of that, didn't you? Gee. No. <laughs> she did it herself. No, actually it's, it's uh, beneficial to be left-handed. Because the left, the left side of the body accesses the right side of the brain, so it's more intuitive when you're left-handed. I'm going to change right now. <laughs> it's not too late. It's all going like I don't know really have a choice, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she, she, she likes to test the future. You know, she kind of takes a test, a, a step out there. And then, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay. It sounds like you, were, you raised a, night, a good daughter there, or had some help. Yeah, well, you, you know, remarkable, because you... You get it all. Well, I'll tell you, she's very careful. She's very careful. She does not want to make mistakes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Big mistakes, you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Gene, so, you are wonderful. Who haven't I done? Just him. Well, just, just the, just the, the only son, just the one that we all show. I'm not here, really. I was born a poor coal miner's daughter. <laughs> I just got to look at what you're wearing and see if the colors say anything about you. He's a big, he's a big Elvis son fan, I know that. We went to Memphis, him and I went to Memphis with our wives, of course, and, and uh, we went into Sun Studio, and he's been loving Sun Studio ever since, so. Because yeah, I never, there. I never made it to the Sun Studio back when I was a DJ. It okay. took all those years to get there, and I, I met Elvis and Jerry Lewis and Johnny Cash and Carl Perkins all before Johnny I met Cash where they too. recorded. Yeah, yeah. Roy Orbison, Roy Orbison, and Jack Clements. See, those are names. There's some names that you guys were talking about earlier, and I don't know those <laughs> people. He's mentioning people. That they're legends. What legends, you, people yeah. People he's mentioned yeah. are legends. And yes. they're all dead. But, you know, I had to say... Some, someday I'll tell you the story about Elvis Presley coming through the bathroom window. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that you telling me that story. story. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, Jerry Lee Lewis is still living, isn't he? He's still alive. Yeah, we still have... He's the only one left. Yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis. Wow. Yeah. All the rest of them have passed. Every time one of them went, a piece of me went with them. Another well, you've got a lot of pieces left, I can tell by your voice. <laughs> he, does. Nice. he does. Question. Yes. Um, the schools are getting away from personal writing. Yeah, and that's bad because, in fact, I'm hoping to uh, be able to uh, put online a, a research uh, project that was going on for four years that realizes the kids have very much been dumbed down mm -hmm. significantly. What are they doing now? They're, they're not even teaching uh, uh, printing in some ways. They're just doing the, you know, the typing. Because when you write, you're going through different areas. You have three zones. Do you mind if I talk about this? You have three zones to uh, cursive writing. And you have, let's say, the O and the A will uh, tell you what the center zone is. And that it has to do with... Uh, the organs, the internal organs from uh, about the armpits uh, down to the hip. And uh, then anything that above the O and the A has to do with the, how you use your mind and to what degree you extend it into abstract and whatever. And then below the O and the A, like the Y and the P and the Q, and 
letters like that, you have what motivates you. You have your emotion. You know, it has to do with motion. It has to do with understanding. And it has to do with the hips, legs, and feet. What? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I, I missed know. something in school. Wow! Jean, may I ask, you know, I, I, when you're talking about, and Jean, man, thank you for bringing that up, how they're not teaching kids to write cursive anymore. I would imagine this would be an incredible tool for school counselors to help assess children, how they're progressing in school. Oh, yes. and <clears throat> I, I used to do some programs for teachers. I think the last one I did was in Whitehall years ago. I had a, I had my office and I had a little health food store. Nice. Colby and Whitehall. But uh, yeah, I did I did a lot of work with teachers uh, for the Whitehall school system. Well, I'm hoping that more teachers hear this and uh, maybe start to incorporate this into their school programming. Yeah, I've Colleges. asked, um, I, I'm, yeah. I, I worked with a couple of um, superintendents and trying to get them to allow me to do even a presentation to teachers because I can help them understand students they're having problems with. Well, you've certainly helped us here tonight, Jean. <laughs> Jean Drew, ladies and gentlemen. Jean, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight. Um, again, Jean Drew, graphologist, consultant. You've been all over the country and you... And outside the country. And outside the country. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think I'd go back to China, especially now. Right, right. Um, well, but my favorite place was uh, was Indonesia. Oh, that sounds beautiful. We're glad to have you here in our corner of the world in West Michigan. So, Jean Drew, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, if you'd like to get a hold of Jean right. Drew, um, would you like to give out your phone number, or would you like me to give that out? Or? Yeah, I mean, you can do it, or I can do it. Doesn't matter. Okay, um, well, go ahead. Uh, well, it's um, it's my cell phone. It's 773-294-8644. All right. Jean Drew. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You have. That's what. That's why I figured this is perfect. Okay, talking tunes. We're back. Is Oscar Azo? We're here with Greg. We're here with Bob. We're here with Britta. We're here with Paul. And no, we're still Peter, here. Please. Oh, Peter. I'm sorry. Peter Tripp. Show guy. me the money. He had a kid in the third <laughs> row. I don't know. That's what he used to use back in the '50s. So you know. I'm sure Gene knows exactly why he does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gene could probably tell him why he has to hide behind that, that alias name. Of course, I don't know. Well, I've always used my, my real name, and you've always used uh, yeah. your, Britta has. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is... <laughs> <laughs> did did you did you get a lot of calls back there when you were when you were Being first like getting into it stalker like, people yeah 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 you I know did. I'm from Muskegon it just would have been too weird I mean I, I no not really I didn't really have any really not until later on but I'm from Muskegon people have been like man I went to elementary school with that girl her name is well that's true you're, <laughs> you're pretty Britta. well known in, in Muskegon her name is Witta her name is Witta 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 that's my main name Wodewald is my main name. You turn on the radio. <laughs> yes, the same Wodewalds who are teachers at Muskegon High School. Yeah, I get my, that ass a lot. My, my worst time was in, uh, at Rock 95 when I was doing overnights in the, in the kids in the summer. It was terrible. I had them calling at my house all the time. Because you were a stud, man. Oh, yeah, that was the See? reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason. Yeah. See? See, there's a difference between you and I. Oh, People didn't okay. care to call me or <laughs> so. he, he, he had girls calling him wanting to date him. I know. Oscar. Okay. Stud. Anyway. No, I can't want to go there. That's why he brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Britta was saying, please, someone call. Someone, I know. Call. Someone yeah, right. stop me. I mean, seriously, it was, I was the really the only female at the, I mean, I was really the only female for many, many, many years um, at the stations that I worked at. And all the guys, I was always amazed, these radio guys, all you radio guys, you always have all your groupies. These guys always had the groupies. So is that how it works? Okay. I never had the groupies. Yeah. And I guess that's a good thing because I really, you know, you wouldn't, have known, I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't know what to do them. anyway. No, you don't <laughs> I wouldn't have known what to do. I, had, I did something wrong then because when I was back there doing it, I was the groupie. Uh -uh. With all the big guys around, I was. <laughs> something happened. What happened? He had his groupies. He's being modest about yeah. it right now. Anyway. Well, I, I had I had one groupie that followed me around from Rock ninety five all the way to MUS for thirty years. 
she would not leave me alone. Mm. No names mentioned, but yeah. <laughs> Let me just say this. It it's, wasn't me. I, no, it wasn't you. It was, it was female. It was it, a female. It, it, let me say this. It's overrated. It's it overrated. Yeah, oh, big time. Oh, it's overrated. When I performed as the G Man for those years, I, uh, it was crazy. It was. Well, yeah, you you too. You were a stud. It was crazy. Because you and I go back to the Hilton days. Yes. And oh, my. Yeah, early Hilton days, 85, 84, or something like that. Raven. Oh, yeah. the band that I was in Raven at the, uh, I met, the I met one of your I met one of your old girlfriends about two years ago again. <laughs> I remember. Anyway. We won't get into that. <laughs> Thank we'll, you. We'll have wives and kids now, so we Thank won't you. get into that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jean's um, still here, too, so be careful. Yeah, I know. Jean's still here. She can write and read right into that. She's going to analyze a whole bunch of oh, other I stuff know she, now. You know what? She's very, very observant, and I feel like I should be in a well, corner here, with a Here's a good, analyze, a good question for her to analyze, because the question I have is, like, with being in radio and being a musician and being in sports, um, you meet all kinds of stars, celebrities, you know. I mean, whether they be actors, whether they be singers, whether whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I want to see, make a toll here of who has seen, I, we pretty much know who won already, Greg, don't we? I, I say yes, but I... You've seen I, a lot, yeah. I, I, you have. There is some close... You snuck backstage to way many, way more concerts well, no. than anybody. Well, no, remember we opened up. We were the first one on. That's true. Out of landing and, You're right. And all the traveling that we, but the people that um, Peter over there. Yeah. Met. I mean, those are some of the names. Yeah. So we we can start with him first. Want to start with him first? Let's, yeah. Let's start, start with, with Elvis ah, okay. and a peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> bananas. Yeah. And bananas. Yeah. Peanut butter and bananas. <laughs> what do you want to know? I want to know how many celebrities you interviewed back in the fifties. But there's you other know, ones. Better there's other off. ones too because you and I have named them. You and I have done them too together. I, well, think, that, the, yeah. I think the easier question: Who did you interview? Would who I easier. didn't interview? Yes. Uh, who would, who Tennessee would you, Ernie Ford. Okay. Who would you would have liked to interview? Would have been a better question that you didn't interview. Singer. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. Celebrity. Uh, <laughs> this is radio here. Come on. I'm trying to think of the people that I didn't didn't talk to, or which is there's quite a few of them. Well, see, I know. But I met I, all the ones that I really idolized and wanted to talk to. I did. Frank Sinatra. I no, I did. Uh, yeah, I would have loved to have done that. I didn't. No. See, see, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, you had to. You yeah, had the you mind. You had to, you had to wake me up a little. bit. I want to answer your questions for him too because I know who they are too. But well, who, who would like be your top ten or whatever? Who are the people you really? Was like you were awestruck. The ones that came from Elvis, Johnny Cash, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, Roy Orbison, the creators uh, of rock and roll. That's yeah, yeah, that's the group right there. But they there. turned down a lot of artists, though. They did turn down some big names. Oh yeah, I went to yeah. other places. Well, Screaming Jay was there too first before Elvis and all them. Well, there was a lot of them that yeah. I didn't realize until we went to the Sun Company that the were actually did work yeah. for Sun. Right. I, but, I can't think of them top of my head, but well, what tell tell the story about Elvis when you met Elvis about being the nice guy and you said, "Do I have to like pry okay, it well, out of your head or what?" <laughs> num number one, number one, this lady sitting next to me was a little bit more professional type of per I was the water boy. I was never the chief man in the radio. Yeah, when, you were, when you were 16 years old, just out right. of high school. 16 to 22, I mean, I was the guy sitting over here Yeah, like this. That was I, in that food and cello. And that food <laughs> and that food with cello, Fabian, Frankie Avalon, uh, Bobby Darren, they're all in a group of their own. That was all the RPI field house in Albany, New York. Yeah, that was a K, was it WK? Elvis, uh, uh, WPTR, TRY, 1540 on your dial, Albany, <laughs> Schenectady, Troy. <laughs> okay. Top 40, rock and roll. I right. think Peter won. Yeah, well, he met Wolfman, too. They worked well, with Wolfman. Well, when I was doing, what I was doing again, I wasn't doing it, uh, and his name was uh, uh, Tom. Uh, Shannon, not not Shannon, Mike Shannon, yeah. and WKBW in Buffalo, New York. I happened to be there. Don't ask me where the station was because he did the midnight show and it was always dark when we went there. And one day there was a knock on the door like, okay, yeah, go let him in, go let him in. So I was the person who would go let him in. Who walks in? 
the wolf man. I'm going, oh <laughs> you know how it is. And he came in and he joined the show. And I remember the story you told me too about the wolf man. You said that uh, you went to the reunion at KBW and the wolf man was there and you said, hi, I'm Peter Tripp the Curly Head and Gibbs from Third Road. He said, oh, okay. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty cool though. I always think that's very cool that you got to be part of radio back in the 50s when rock and roll was happening. So. WPTR, TRY, WSNX, uh, WABC out of New York, WKBW. WABC. <laughs> WABC. <laughs> and they were all short stinks. Stink, 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 stink. They all stink. stuck short. Short, yeah. Short stints, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and you... All, all the shows stink. I mean, yeah. stunk. I mean, well, you, you were on... So. He was on one of, the, one of the early Dick Clark shows, too. Oh, American Bandstand. American Bandstand, yeah. We got, yes. uh, we got on. We got, I was able to meet Dick Clark, and uh, Jackie Wilson was on there. Uh, the Platters were on there. And, and you, I'd have to, I'd have to. And you fell in love with the, the woman in the platters. I can't remember her name, but you fell oh, in love yeah. with her. You know, yeah. it's been so many years. I used to know her name and the guy she danced with all the time. Yeah. And, and, and they were popular. Everybody knew them across yeah. the whole country. And she was lovely. Of course, again, I'm in my <laughs> te late teens, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before I met my present wife of 45 years. You know, this is all before that, so. So that's pretty hard to beat. I don't know yeah, who wants that's, to go next. It's really hard to beat. It, yeah, it's hard to beat. Well, I can go on and on and on, but <laughs> let's not get boring, you know. I, I'm not bored. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I, it's, just, it's pretty just um, great because the, the, you're like the historian mm -hmm. of rock and roll of the mm -hmm. people yeah. that you met. Um, let's see, Willie Nelson. Okay. We're opening up at Willie Nelson up at Pine Knob. Um, and uh, no, 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 not Pine Knob. Used to be a concert place up north. Oh, so Valdez Lakes. Valdez Lakes. Lakes. Val Val yes. Yeah, I got yeah. some stories of Valdez. We'll go, go for it. And it was just a week after he got arrested for smoking dope. Oh. Which time? Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, it was one of the back, you know, twenty some years ago. Okay. Yeah, and, out of control. Uh, that was a few years ago. Yeah, and and so out of control, we had to go on forest, and, of course. And um, when we got there, they literally stopped. Now I want you to imagine all us guys. Now you know, if you don't know us uh, out of control, it's like the Scottville Clown Band <laughs> being in the car. And but anyway, they stopped us, and they said, "If you have any drugs, alcohol, can't be backstage because Willie just got busted." And so it can't be around. So if you have any beer or anything, it must be in a cup, uh, solo cup or pop cup or anything. Uh, but it, you could nothing could be back there. Um, end up being Willie, fantastic guy. Yeah, fantastic. So guy. then he went to jail after that, or what? Uh, Willie never went to jail oh, okay. for an all, all long periods of time. Um, by any rate. Uh, fantastic person um, what I remember about her is is that um, the same thing with Michael McDonald um, they wanted the biggest thing that they wanted to do was ride down to Holland um, then and they wanted to, to visit Holland and Tulips and shop down in Holland um, uh, both those people were great what can I say opening up for James Brown Oh yeah, that um, Bill introduced that, and it's, it's, you, you you talked about being starstruck, Peter. Um, opening up for who, who my hero. Yeah, and um, well, yeah, you, you you used to do his dance moves. You can't do them anymore. But you used to do them. I, yeah, I couldn't do them anymore. <laughs> um, you had to call Erickson Crane to get me back up. <laughs> um, but but to meet him, and one of the things that really his that just blew me away about James Brown's show. It was hot that year, and his show went two and a half hours. He never left the stage. 
he sung. I mean, they performed. They performed like machines, and they, and and then he brought out a magician, and it, I, I mean, it was just left and right. And two drummers and three bass players, and and um, he he's over there playing keys, and and then the Gap Band played the very next day, and Charlie Wilson nice was in the back. Um, and they had to have a towel and they were fanning them and it just amazed me how the perseverance of James Brown and I, I, I think that one of the other thing was the writer of Frank Zappa okay was about I want to say three inches but you know men we don't know inches and I won't go there all right so I'm not sure I understand that <laughs> huh. I'm not sure I want to understand I, that don't 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 don't, okay, good. don't go there <laughs> it, it missed it was a home run and it it fell it went foul okay, okay. um <laughs> anyway Frank Zappa's writer was so big and and what the front thought had to do is it wasn't just one signature you had to go through page it's like 300 pages yeah. and in and I'll give you an example of one of the things that I um, remembered was is that it, it, it was so um, precise that it said that if if I perform a third encore on the fourth Tuesday, there must be caviar <laughs> and Jay's potato chips and seven towels in this particular place. Yeah. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. And then other stuff before Out of Control and before G Man and all that kind of stuff was working in those concerts and um, one band wouldn't go on stage because the, they didn't have the, the water and then it was another band that I, I will mention that they literally had tubs and these tubs were like horse troughs of water <laughs> and and every liquor that you can imagine they all had and um, working that's around why you those, stuck back there right? Uh, yeah that's why I was back that, that was that's why I was back there just just working with you know, we never worked with anybody that was rude, unprofessional, or um, they were always courteous, nice, earth, wind, and fire. Ugh. What can I say? Yeah. Um, My favorite. Just <laughs> one of your top ten album picks. Top, yeah. top, yeah, I'll go through yeah. those top ten album picks yeah. a little later. Um, but uh, I, I guess we we're really blessed to be around so many people, really nice. Um, and uh, uh, Bob talked about this a little bit, you know, like having Kathy being a drummer and and stuff like that. You know, she got a lot of compliments from the the, the artists, not because she was some pretty girl back there drumming, because they liked her style. Yeah, and they would come up and there were things that they liked and and um, or you know the uh, and the last thing they would come and watch the show. Right. Um, they were they were, which was pretty remarkable. Thinking that they they have to go on, but here's this local sap band, you know, out of control, getting ready to go on. And here's Michael Madonna, Bonnie Raid, and all these guys that we opened up for, right. watching us do this show, and we're singing half of their stuff, and we sucked at it, but <laughs> we got paid good money. Yeah. Um, but out of control, always got paid good money got for some reason. Good money, and took long breaks. <laughs> and used to drive me nuts. Oh, my. oh, don't even start me on a long break thing. Okay. No, I got to go there. All right. If you are in a band and, and, and if you're playing somewhere, take short breaks and give people the show. Okay? Can we just say that? Out of control would play for 10 minutes and go on a 45 minute break <laughs> and I would get on the stage and call a band call we'd be on party in the parks and I'm screaming for the band to come back and they did that and it drove me nuts princess princess <laughs> princess <laughs> princess <laughs> Rob yeah. uh, you know just oh my gosh All right, anyway. that was one of the things I talked to Kathy about too is we got to get the, the what members are, are around still of the out of control band including like Dale Clock and Rob Schweifler and Tom Schaub and 
You, of course. The, you, and Kathy. You would never get a word in. Oh, I don't, that's fine. I'll sit back and listen. I, I mean, I enjoyed it when I did that documentary with you guys because it was that was entertaining to me. Uh, it was fun. In all reality, the, those guys are uh, uh, alone in the doubt. Yeah. I, I, every person that was part of that conglomerate um, are my brothers and sisters. Yeah. And um, they they meant a lot. Yeah. And they they mean a lot today. And and that was a great thing about playing without a control. So. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, we went, a lot of people. We went sideways, so let's take a quick break. <laughs> then we'll come back. I'm sure Britta has. Of course, has you were talking to me. What? Which way? You didn't. You didn't expect me to stay the course. Jean saying, you know, Jean is still here. She said, you better write something else. <laughs> Squirrel, easily distracted. I'm sure. Squirrel. <laughs> I was. I was waiting for Bob to say squirrel, but anyway, yeah, here we go. How we take a quick break? We'll be back. More talking tunes. Okay. Talking tunes, and we're back, and we're playing a little bit of a, a game here of who knew the most celebrities. Yeah. Now, I talked to, of course, Boatman. I talked to him, and he was telling me about all the celebrities that he had he had met and talked to. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he partied hardy with a lot of them, so mm -hmm. a lot of rock and rollers. Mm -hmm. And then I, had, I recently talked to JoJo Gerard, who we're going to have a little clip from him too. And he he had just a ton of people that he talked to too. A lot of a lot of famous celebrities back in the Sunny FM days. But I know. I'm not even sure if I should even talk about the celebrities that I've talked to. But hey, G-Man, you did forget about one. You forgot about... Uh, he didn't mention you. No. <laughs> uh, Oscar. I, was, uh, I forgot Bill Marshall, too. Oh, Bill. Uh, yes, him, no, too. You forgot about... We, we, you and me and John Van Wyke introduced and talked to Eddie Money. I was just getting ready. To, yeah. But I was... But we, we Try talked not to him, to. and he said, I'm going on stage, I'm kissing my wife now. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the talk. <laughs> well, he, he came, he was on, he was at Heritage Landing. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the, the white Prince shirt that yeah. he had. Yeah. And then he came back for like, uh, a show at the L.C. Walk Arena right, right. I went with the same too. Prince shirt and yeah. Jean, which we, you know, yeah. introduced. And I remember him being so loaded <laughs> that his his manager just gave him the microphone and just pushed him toward the stage. <laughs> towards the stage. Now, Eddie <laughs> Money don't have friends like Michael Jackson. Eddie Money has friends or some crap like that. <laughs> I, I don't remember that. Oh, I, I remember it because he said it at both of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Britta had, had some uh, big fame with Eddie Money too before you got a story with oh, him. Oh right? my God. Well, mine was... More, see, you guys, the thing about... My situation is I've been in so many different musical genres over the years. I've been in rock, pop, alternative rock, adult contemporary, country. country yeah. um, so I've had the really cool, like you guys, I've had the really cool opportunity to meet and introduce a lot of different people. Yeah, Eddie Money. That was a phone interview that I did with Eddie okay. Money, and that was a different show. He was coming to Grand Rapids. Of all places, he was performing at a bowling alley. He was going to be performing at a bowling alley, and I felt really bad. In the same shirt. That's where he got Probably. the shirt. In the same shirt. Probably. The bowling shirt. But it was a morning interview, and he was he was in charge of getting his kids up and ready for school. So he was running around, all right, are you want waffles or scream? He's like, hold on, hold on, I got to ask my kids what they want for breakfast. <laughs> the whole interview was live, and it was Eddie Money getting his kids up and ready for school. They were going to miss the bus, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but as far as um, my favorite parts of meeting some of the people I've met, and I could go on and on you guys I mean and I know you could too but I mean my favorite parts have been the stuff that happened not on air or not on stage because I mean I've introduced oh, for crying out loud with summer celebration with yeah. the Van Andel Arena with the intersection with me 93 birthday bash Oh, I've, I've Moose Fest. Moose Fest I've had to introduce oh my gosh so many I could go on and on I mean but the people I love to talk about the most are the people that weren't celebrities just yet. They were mm. just busting out. And then they, of course, became mega, mega stars, like Taylor Swift. Sat on a rooftop with Taylor Swift, and she was the sweetest, most beautiful, lovely girl ever. She was true. She truly is a sweet girl. I'm trying to think. A country girl named Amy that was here. Amy uh, Grant? Not Grant. Um, I'm, well, anyway, there was a country girl 
um, sung at the front hall. There were 700 people there. And I wish I could think of a name. Not maybe it's Amy not Amy Winehouse. No, no, it wasn't Amy Winehouse. But I, I got it. she's anyway. She's in the country. But it was seven hundred. The Grammys came on the next week, mm-hmm. and she won got like, Grammys and I can't think. Of well, a name. that's that's what well, prime example. This past yeah. weekend was the Grammys, and I watched two of my favorite guys who I've brought to the intersection and introduced many, many times, hung out with them backstage, just won the Grammy for country music. It was Dan and Shay. Um, But the people that, like Britney Spears, oh gosh, Justin Timberlake, back before he was the mega, 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 mega star that we know of him today, he came uh, with a little group called NSYNC, and I had the luxury of introduce, or interviewing them, and I thought he was the cockiest little jerk I'd ever met <laughs> in my life. He kept calling me Peanut Britta. He kept like making fun of me and calling peanut me Peanut Britta. Britta. Yeah, and I'm like, this kid's going nowhere. He's going nowhere. <laughs> if I have anything to say about it, he's not going anywhere. He's not even going to leave this he's room. Not, he's not going anywhere. He's not Gene, gonna, come back here and analyze over. He's, right. he's not going to make it anywhere. <laughs> um, but like, you know, the funnest things... I've done in, in the coolest memories I have are off air um, sitting backstage with Garth Brooks and his wife Trisha sharing recipes because he was doing back to back shows at the Van Andel a few years ago and they had nothing but time to kill in their dressing room in between his shows their shows they were both performing and we just sat back there and talked about kids and talked about what Garth did in all those years when he retired Sorry. he was literally he was his kids baseball coach and he was responsible for bringing the snacks so Garth Brooks and I were talking about the snacks he was going to bring to baseball practice, you know? I mean, that was priceless to me. Yeah. Um, Blake Shelton, I know him very well. Now I'm, now I'm name dropping you guys, but <laughs> with B93, he came to B93 Birthday Bash actually four times. People don't know this, but the fourth time got canceled because of rain. He flew in that night special. He was going to be our mm-hmm. special guest, but a lot of people don't know that. But I had the opportunity to be hanging out with him every time he would come to town. And that boy can drink. (laughs) It was his birthday, usually, because it usually fell on his birthday. And he'd celebrate his birthday with us. And that boy can drink. And he got offended when I I wouldn't. I'm sitting on this tour bus with my bosses. And he's like, girl, you need a drink. And I'm like, no, I'm good. He (laughs) threw a beer can at my head. (laughs) True story. That was Blake Shelton. Um, Gosh, you guys, I, I mean. I bet your Gwen wouldn't be too happy happy about that but yeah okay Oh, oh no! This is back before Glenn. Before this is Glenn, actually yeah. even before, before he was Mar- in, he yeah. was engaged to Miranda at the time oh, okay. when that particular event happened. He was engaged to Miranda, but um, but gosh, like Huey Lewis, I love Huey Lewis. Yeah. Huey Lewis came to summer celebration, and I got to interview him on the phone earlier that morning. But then that evening at the show. He, you know, I was bringing a group of people back to meet him, and he swings open his his the little door to his little his his room, you know, his, and he's like, where's Britta? And I brought my sister back with me, and she's like, right here. And she, <laughs> my sister, I could still beat her down for that one. But he came up, and he planted the biggest kiss on me. And I still, to this day, haven't washed. I still haven't brushed my teeth. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> I still haven't brushed my teeth. <laughs> and that was many years ago. I bet she's next to you, Greg. <laughs> but I mean, you think I got teeth over here? Yeah, I know. Right? He, he tried to give me one earlier, one of those mints. But, but I mean, other, other silly stuff like... Like David Lee Roth, talking Valdu Lakes. Yeah. Yes. David Lee Roth came, um, and his band didn't like him very much. So I had the really? pleasure, I had the yeah, pleasure right. of taking taking his band fishing because it was right down the road. I, I loaded him in the car because it was a, a rock festival that whole day. Yeah. I'm like, you guys, let's go fishing. So we went to that little fishing dock right there in Silver Lake, yeah. and I took him out fishing for a couple hours because they just wanted to get away from him because I guess he's quite arrogant. David Lee Roth, I've never met him, but I guess he's quite arrogant. No, so we no. were hanging out with Ed. Then? No, this was after he was. Oh, this was, after this the, was after he's. Oh, oh, please! Yeah. I would have loved to hang out with. I was wondering. I was saying you didn't mention no, Eddie. And, uh, no, I would have loved to take him fishing. <laughs> no, this was, <laughs> this was after they booted him out of the band. Oh, uh, okay. This right. was after David Lee Roth left Van Halen, yeah. and okay. um, that's when and it was Van Hagar. It was, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, so I t- but I mean, um, but honestly, my my classic going back to the classics. And he's no longer with us on this planet, and we lost him way too young. And this is back before I got into radio. But Valdu Lakes, going back to Valdu Lakes, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, wow! The year before, oh. the year before his tragic accident, yeah. and oh. there was it rained. It was downpouring that entire day, and 
I, he is my idol. I love oh. Ray Vaughn. And, um, there was literally 150 people there at Valdu Lake standing oh, in my. the mud and he literally reached out and was like touching every single person that came because we were like you know how Valdu Lakes is set up yeah, you know those yeah. little benches right up close to the stage oh. and I got to touch Steve Ray Vaughan <laughs> I got to touch Steve Ray Vaughan's hand you know and, the, he, and of course we lost him far too right. far too early did he play the show hmm? did he play he played show? a show for us 150 people now that's the stuff he, that I like yeah. he was phenomenal in the sky clouds in the sky parted the sun came out turned out to be a beautiful evening and he was still on stage playing and people started coming in but at the very beginning of the show I mean oh that is one of the, my favorite memories right there and I wasn't even in radio yet but I don't know you guys I know I mean many many people country music rock pop you name it I've probably interviewed them introduced them or well, you probably had a interviewed beer can quite a head. few of them, too. Huey, you probably interviewed quite a few of them, too, because yes, he did. before the concerts. Yeah. Yep. Huey yep. Lewis. Love him. I still, at the bar, beginning of the night, when I'm just trying to get started, play his cruising <gasps> with Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, yes. Which I just found out was... From the I movie thought, duets. No, but I thought it closed yeah. and it sounded familiar. I said, yeah. I've heard this Smoky. song before somewhere. Smoky. Yeah, Smoky, it, was, it was a baby. remake. That's they, right. But he sang it with Gwyneth in the movie Duets. Right, yeah. Which was not a bad movie. Yeah, not a bad movie. It didn't get, like, huge no. um, box office hit. But. but that's still a nice, just soft starter to just let everybody know I've got things going and know. he's a truly nice man I just not just because he kissed me he's a truly nice man <laughs> but also my favorite and, and I'm going to stop it at this one because I could go on and on but I had the opportunity to spend the afternoon in my studio with Sarah McLaughlin oh, wow. I am a huge fan oh, of her wow. she was the creator of the Lilith Fair if you remember the Lilith Fair mm -hmm. um, and she's just a brilliant beautiful woman and she didn't have anything uh, this is one of those stories she didn't have anything else to do because her show was that night at DeVos Place and um she had nothing but time to kill and I was the only interview they had scheduled for her that afternoon so she just hung out with me and did a whole rest of my show with me she helped me introduce songs and wow that's cool yeah and she's honestly she's such a cool chick she um, her husband was her her then husband was her drummer and they drove their own tour bus and she literally drove her own tour bus she would get so bored and she would ask to drive the tour bus, and she would actually drive her own tour bus. So I thought that was so cool. But there you go, fellas. There's, I mean, I don't beat your stories by any. Are you kidding? Oh, you no. The difference, the difference, the difference between you and me is, and I envy you because I always wanted to be on the air, talking to these people, interviewing them. See, all mine are backstage, either before or after the concert. So I wasn't on the radio. I was just with a group of reporters and talk to them all backstage but sometimes that's the cooler stuff but yeah. like you said <laughs> that's the cooler some stuff. of the things you <laughs> hear about and is, but you mentioned elvis and he was a polite guy that's what he was backstage uh, yes ma'am no ma'am uh you know he was very polite to everybody but I'm yeah. sorry, but I think you win. Just, just yeah, by just that by alone. Elvis, this is just, just by yeah. Elvis. You yeah, win. Elvis, Elvis Hands Perkins. down. Well, I, I, for, I forgot. Uh, I forgot Bo Diddley, Gene McDaniel's. I forgot Chuck Berry, and I forgot oh, Fats Domino. Hey, Wiz. Oh my Some gosh. Some of the other big ones, you know. Oh, you get gosh. the trophy. Yeah. You, you get, get the, the trophy. trophy. He definitely gets the trophy. Now, the one thing you forget about, though, because you and I met. I think that's pretty much where we met was at the the Hilton, which was the Muskegon Harbor Hilton back in 1984, 85, I'm thinking. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when you were the DJ and I was the house. Yeah, you were the, we were the house band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you were the house band. Uh, okay, okay, so story. We The house band, and the house band was uh, Rod Shab and um, Doggone It, Now I'm Brain Dead. <laughs> Well, let me let me tell some of the stories from, from go, over there. Don't come go to you. ahead. Go Don't ahead. Come to you. Go ahead. Okay. So, like, and just this is just at the Hilton now because we're not talking about radio. We're talking about people you met or whatever. So I met Kiss over at the over at the the Hilton mm -hmm. because you know they were playing back there at the L.C. Walker Arena or whatever it is now. Yeah, I went the, to that concert. Yeah, they were yeah. playing. And they were at Fro Froenthal. I think it was a Froenthal. It was, it was a Kiss and also Ted Nugent. Ooh. We're all hanging out in the, the Emeralds Bar in, in uh, Muskegon there. Emeralds, oh my yeah. gosh, that's a blast from the past. And the Pistons were there once, which Bob would probably appreciate that. The Pistons came in there. It was funny because wow. I was on a 
pedestal, like a stand that was went up quite high when I DJed. And the guys from the Pistons came up there and looked at me straight eye to eye. <laughs> it was like, what, two, three feet high? And they still <laughs> could look at me straight in the eye. And I was six foot, so I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, also, uh, Waylon Jennings saw him, George Jones, Vince Gill, uh, Conway Twitty, Richard Marks. Richard Marks, a little story about him, he was actually sitting out in the lobby. You probably remember this. He was sitting out in the lobby because we had a policy that you had to have a collar on your shirt to get in Emerald's Lounge. And he had oh a t-shirt on. So I they would not that let. Show. I introduced that show at the, at the summer celebration. So he sat yeah. out in the hallway waiting for people to kind of recognize him because he, <laughs> he couldn't go on the bar. I'm thinking, this is Richard Marks. What's wrong with you people? Richard, one of the most brilliant songwriters. So you were Frankie yeah. Valley. Now, um, when I was growing up, the one, the one band that I remember, the fake band, was, of course, the Monkees. And the Monkees came to town when they had that song, that This Is Then, That, that Is Now, or this, whatever yeah. it was called. Yeah. But anyway, so I, Davey, Davy Jones and Mickey and Dolan. Peter Dolan. Torque was probably still. Peter Torque was upstairs. This oh, yeah. Year. yeah, yeah. This past year. But he was upstairs. He stayed upstairs. But those two were down there. And the first time ever, I was at Rock 95 at the time, uh, at the radio station. I said, I want an autograph. So I got it from Mickey Dolan's. He wrote, I said, can you write to the guys at Rock 95? I don't know what he wrote. It had, it said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it said nothing. So after that, I never asked for autographs. But the biggest one that I met at the Hilton was Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa. And that was so that cool. Was that was meeting so him cool. the day before. And this is where one of your old girl, and I hate, you know, I hate to say this with Emily, but anyway, one of your old, old girlfriends way back in the 80s had Frank Zappa sign her chest. Oh, so. <laughs> she wasn't a girlfriend. Yeah. But she I was just a friend. A friend. One of your friends. Friend. One of your friends. <laughs> anyway. So I played I played the song Dancing Fool, Frank Zappa tune for him. And I said, was that okay? And he kinda went like, you know That's what he did get, to me. Yeah, I get him. He was drinking his coffee. Yeah, yeah, it was his legs full and he just drink his coffee. He's like, Yeah, okay, get whatever, get away from it, you know. So yeah, he was he was a little different, but then, you know, Frank Zappa to me was pretty cool. Yeah. So. I so I got I got it. Tim Cindy Tim and Cindy and Rod Shop and I. And we were the house band. Brand new for thing. The for the hill. Yeah. And you were the DJ. And um, we needed a name for the band and I was dating this woman and they and she was stark raving crazy. <laughs> And you, dated a few, you dated a few of them. Which explains. <laughs> Which explains a lot of stuff. And so they She's said, my groupie? And they, and, they said, and they said Raven. And that's how the band was named. Oh, oh my I gosh. remember that. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. We had a lot of good bands. So I was looking at some old footage uh, that I had taken. And remember Jamask? No, that was a Jamask. Great, that was a great house band. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so the Hilton was kind of like my big thing. I mean, we did some interviews. I remember the, the one interview that I did, the nicest guy ever was Rob Grill, which probably people don't know who he is. You know who he is? I've heard the name. Well, you and I did the interview together, but. Uh, okay, that's why I remember. He was from the, the, grass, the, gra the lead singer of the Grassroots. Yeah, okay, all right. And then uh, Randy Bachman, I always enjoyed that one. Bachman, yeah, they were. Uh, great. Mike Reno. Now, like I say, the, the Rob Grill, he just passed away, too. Well, not just passed away in 2011 too, but it's it's just amazing that all the people that you can you can talk to in either the DJing, radio, music business. So I just thought this would be kind of something fun that we could put together. But Bob, you got you got people, don't you? You got people, man. Yeah, people. You got people. <laughs> no, it's funny because you guys were mentioning a lot of the names from music, of course. And I, since I don't have the music background, that's, of course, my wife, Kathy. She's got that. And a lot of the names you guys have mentioned when she was with Out of Control. Yeah. Other times, it, you know, that's when she or got King to meet B. a lot of people. King B. And uh, the, the one, I would say, musically speaking, that you didn't mention specifically, but it was part of um, Summer Celebration, was the fabulous Thunderbirds. Mm. Oh, yes. And then the coolest story about that was uh, we were backstage after the show, and Kim Wilson, the lead singer uh, of the band, was hanging around back there, but we couldn't find anybody else in the band. We, we had CDs. We wanted to get our CDs signed and just meet the guys. And, you know, Kathy's already back there, so she allowed us to come back there. And... Uh, Kim Wilson said, you know, Kathy, I think Kathy wanted to get a drum head sign. And so he's like, well, the guys already went to the hotel, but I'll, I'll send it with the driver and he'll go get 
the, the drum head signed or whatever. But anyway, Kim just stayed back there and hung out and talked with us. And we had her daughter in the in a stroller, just just a baby, still on a bottle, right? And Kim took the time to feed her the bottle. Wow. <laughs> So that was pretty incredible. Yeah. You know, he was just that down to earth and was just like, he didn't care about going to the hotel and partying and doing all. He was just like wanting to meet his fans and just be a down, really down to earth guy. And he literally, you know, while my daughter was still laying on this trailer, just a stroller, I should say, but just uh, fed her the bottle. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. That kind of goes to prove that there's all these people no matter how famous they are, most of them are pretty much down to earth, regular, mm -hmm. regular Joes like the rest of us. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one for you. We're, we're at Rackus, and um, the, Emily was, uh, no, we just had Savannah. And um, Captain Kangaroo <gasps> was at Rackus. Oh. Robert? Yeah. And um, y'all, yeah, Robert. So I'm sitting there, and I, I approach him, and I go up to him, and I say, <laughs> Captain Kangaroo. Man, and you're my idol. I, I just love you, man. I'm, I'm getting ready to be a dad. Is uh, is there any advice you can give me? He said, "Yeah, go home." <laughs> <laughs> was he there with Mr. Green Jeans? <laughs> no, Green Jeans wasn't there. He was sitting at the bar. He was actually performing at the front. Though. He was performing the the Port City Port Play. Yeah, Port well, City Playhouse. Well, he was he was doing the Wizard of Oz. Yes, he, and he played was, the wizard. Oh. You know? Yeah, that was during yeah, it was during uh, Neil Rosen's. Time. Yeah, I'll never forget that, or neither were my friends. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's so another cool. interview that I actually still have on tape. Was the Neil Rosen interview we did talking tunes? You were you there, Bob? No, yeah, no, not yeah. for that particular. You weren't okay. there. I don't Neil think Rosen, so, not for that I, show. I don't know if you know who he is, oh, but yes. yeah, yes. very, very funny man. Yes, very funny, very, man. very beautiful productions they put oh, on, yeah, and yeah. the Cherry County Playhouse when they were in town as well. They but but Neil Cherry Rosen, County, Cherry see, County. Neil Rosen, he yeah, had some stories. You. I mean, here's a guy that used to write for the Sid Caesar show, you know, and he wrote for um, the, what was that one, that one show? Jeez, now I'm going to have the brain fart. You passed it over here. Um, but he wrote for, oh, Welcome Back, Cotter. He wrote for Welcome Back, Cotter. What? Yeah. Where? Yeah. <laughs> Where? And he was saying how, how nice of a guy John Travolta was. And he was a really nice guy back then. And the, the, thing about, the thing about Neil, and uh, again, we keep, uh, we sound like a broken record, how nice these people were. Yeah. You know, they could have been arrogant. I think the most arrogant per person I met was Frank Zappa. Yeah, he was pretty arrogant. Uh, he was yeah. pretty, it, you know, but he was to himself. All his, he yeah. needed his coffee and his cigarettes. Yeah. But, you know, but we caught... Little we, skinny guy, too. A little teeny skinny guy. Oh, man. We, I met his head security guy. The next day, we snuck in the, the, the sound check yeah. and got caught. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that one good. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but what a great show. Yeah. Yeah, it was a oh, great yeah. show. Do you remember the person that we didn't like, Oscar? Which one? <laughs> I remember Mitch Ryder was a little bit strange. Oh, the Mitch. Queen, the Queen of Soul. Oh, Aretha did get good oh, reviews boy, in she, the back. She treated us so mean. Aretha, yeah, and that was a great show for me. I was in, I was in awe with the Queen. So I didn't get, I didn't she get spit on me. I wouldn't care. <laughs> I know she probably would have too. Yeah, she she probably probably would've. Would've. <laughs> All I know is is that the, the person that cleaned the trailer was mad because uh, she left her panties there or something. <laughs> oh, God. He could have sold them on eBay today. Hey, come on. I know, right? You know, and but they she did not get a good review in the back. And out of all the people I've, I've ever talked to or met or whatever, Rita did not get a good review. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, I'm thinking about with you, too. We used to do a lot of uh, things with TV40. Mm -hmm. We got to go backstage with Kenny Rogers. Remember that? At the LC when he was there. Oh, yeah. You, what, you hear the story about we go backstage, right? I'm in all Kenny Rogers. I mean, forget all the other ones I met. So we're back there. We're watching him set up this stuff. I mean, I've never really seen this big setup. They got this guy's up there doing the laser show. The are really show. cool. Really yeah, cool. the laser yeah. show. And they wouldn't let us get close. They said, that's close enough, guys. What he does up there is... So, I, okay, so we stood back and make a long story With short. With little fake press passes? <laughs> we to make a long story short. TV 40, baby. Yeah, we thought, we couldn't, we, we couldn't do the show. 
Remember, we didn't have tickets or anything else. Right, show right. Us, and we couldn't come to do the show. So we're sitting back in the where they come in and out, talking to the guy back there. And I said, yeah. I said, uh, we weren't going to be in town or something. I said, well, now we're going to be here. We uh, you know, we can't see the show. The guy said, here, here's a couple of passes. Yeah, you got, <laughs> you, got your, you got your scam. He's got your scamming from you or one of the two. I'm not sure which one. But, yeah. Now, the other the other one I want to talk about real quickly, we just, uh, we talked about Valdu Lakes. Now, TV40 again. We were supposed to do, We I talked to the guys at Molly Hatchet. They were going to play at Valdu Lakes. So I'm thinking this is going to be a really cool interview. I, I, I did a show called LVTV. It was a local video show. You remember, you, you were on it, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. He's been on it. But anyway, a local video show, but we were going to go backstage after the concert and talk to the guys from, from uh, Molly Hatchet. Well, the guy I had, Mike something, I can't remember his name anymore, that, did, that hosted the show, was so drunk that we went to the backstage to talk to these guys. He fell over and started puking all, oh over, the, all over the ground. So then I did the interview. And I was like, I had nothing prepared, you know, like usual. But anyway, <laughs> so so it was it was kind of a kind of good. Yeah, after getting gross. all that stuff away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I mean, he got so drunk, he just, that was it. He was done. Well, you know, going back to Valdu, and that's a, I, my very first official interview, I was so nervous, and we had to pick names because Hootie and the Blowfish were there. Ah, there you go. And, and all the radio stations had to pick names of who, I almost puked, okay, let's just say that. <laughs> all the radio station people got to pick a name out of a hat of which person they from the band they got to interview. I got to interview Darius Rucker. Uh, who did, oh no! no, it's not. no I, I know. You didn't I get know. stuck with one of the blowfish. No, you yeah. know who you know who Hootie was. It was a drinking buddy. They all because they all knew each other from college. Yeah. And it was a drinking buddy, and they decided to name their band after their drinking buddy that would get the drunkest. Speaking of drunk things at, at Valdu Lakes, and I almost puked there because I was so nervous to interview Darius, but yeah. he's super nice, very nice. But anyway, he seems like a nice guy. It doesn't it doesn't top the puking story though, Oscar. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Anyway, so there we go. There's our history. You, you got any more, Bob? Or? Not music related. No. Well, no. Not, I mean, it can be like stars or whatever of uh, basketball or football or anything like that. Well, like for, for what I do, you know, broadcasting is yeah. my thing for sports. So to me, the the guy that I look up to probably the most that's still with us is George Blaha. Mm -hmm. So I grew up listening to him call Michigan State football on the radio. He's also called Detroit Pistons on television mm -hmm. for, well, I think both of them for over 40 years now. So he's a voice that I just grew up listening to and just admiring. And I had a chance, I, I actually just contacted the Spartan Radio Network one time and said I would love to meet George. And could I come up to your broadcast booth and just just watch the yeah. show yeah. you know watch them broadcast the game I don't I don't care if I even get to meet the guy or whatever I, I just want to go up there and just like watch what he does because that's what I do and I was going to I'm going to probably steal a few things and get some ideas yeah. see how they run everything so I get up there and you know, Wendy Hart's the producer and she's the one who kind of made everything happen for me and she got me up there and had me all credentialed and then before the game I went down to the field for the pregame and they have, an, uh, you know, they have a little pregame show they do from the end zone and all that kind of stuff so I'm meeting all the other people that are involved and the sideline reporter and everybody and then eventually it's just a little before the game time so then I head up to the get in the elevator go up to the press box so I go up there and George Blaha is about to call the game and at the time his sidekick was Jim Miller the former Spartan quarterback that was his color analyst at that time and then uh, he's got his he's got his spotters with him and everybody you know their their whole thing up there and uh, at one point I think it was maybe half time he took a little break and he come over and he shook my hand and he knew a little bit about me because I had I had told Wendy who I was and why I wanted to come see him and everything and uh, he'd already he'd done must have done a little bit of homework he talked about the big reds a little bit I said that I was uh, coaching my daughter in volleyball, and that's, you know, he knew a couple things about me, so he obviously was, like, down to earth enough to, like, take the time to, like, think about that instead of just blow you off and, now ah, what was your name again? You know, so I was really impressed with that. Well, then the game gets over, and one of the other people comes up, or maybe it was Wendy, and she's like, hey, do you want to go down to the, uh, the locker room? They're going to do the post-game show from the locker room, and they're going to interview a couple of the players, and Jim's going to go down there. You want to go down there with him? And I thought, ah, you know, I, no, no offense, but that doesn't sound that great. I think I'm just going to walk around here as long as George is still sitting here. And, you know, well, then right before George left the press box, he's like, are, are you, are you, do you got to get out of here? And I'm like, no, I'm, I, gotta, I wanted to buy myself that day. And uh, he's like, well, you want to come down to our tailgate? 
so then i said sure you know so i got <laughs> I, I went down there and then they had their own little kind of personal tailgate party it was just a few people that went you know they were there and a couple other people that were involved in the broadcast and his wife was there and so i just sat there for a couple hours and just hung out with them and talked to them and the, all the people there but to me that was like a huge deal yeah because I, I just went there to just like want to observe something and just see the press box itself and, and and hear george call a game and then i end up being able to talk to him and interact with him took pictures with him and all that kind of stuff so Cheer to me burger. that was yeah Cheer Cheer burger. Burger. yeah yeah <laughs> chili yeah it was it was a cold day but yeah that was that was very cool for me for yeah. first far as sports goes um I mean, it's, it's amazing the stuff that we get to run into, though. That's that's the fun thing. And now, people that listen to me call the games on the Big Red Radio Network, you know, the, the touchdown MHS. So I started that 10 years ago, basically, when I first started doing radio. And um, that really, that came from George Blaha. Okay. Because George Blaha's call for the Michigan State Spartans, every time they score, is touchdown MSU. So when I started saying touchdown MHS, um, and again, I was the first one to be the all Big Red you know call all the big red games before that it was just you know people do game of the week and you know jim Moyes and gene young did a ton of the big red games and, and so did other people but i was the first one that actually had the opportunity to be the big red announcer they could do all the games and so i kind of got known for for that and when i started saying touch on mhs some people liked it some people said you got to say muskegon in there somewhere you got to say big reds but i was so like into the the george blaha call and the way it sounded and the way it just rolled and i just i was going to use that I'm, I'm sticking with that and i have for 10 years now calling all the big red games so yeah. that was just one of the one of the many things i've stolen from george over the years well you said one thing too about george getting all the information and stuff beforehand about you i mean there's nobody that is more prepared when you do a game than you i've never seen anybody more prepared no you one you and i worked together <laughs> no about, one about a year or two well doing, yeah doing football games when i was videotaping you were doing the play-by-play -play, yeah and you had your stack of papers man you had everything everything down and this was multi-teams it wasn't just one team well and, and, and on a local level because you know we, we get used to like jim Moyes, right calling all these games i mean right. if you live in muskegon and you've ever heard a high school football game called you know in, in the last 30 40 years you heard jim Moyes, right so he, he is an absolute legend you know he's living in florida now and i still converse with him and send emails to him and we talk on facebook whatever and he's this great guy but you know back then you talk about me being prepared well my remember when i first started i didn't right. of course i never went on the air the, until like week eight or nine of the season so i was just doing all these odd jobs doing stuff in the studio and going with the bear team on ubr and then finally i went out with jim and gene right and, I, and he said i'm gonna let you do some stats right i'm gonna let you read yeah. something like a halftime and post game and i was like oh, you know I, i've never been on the air before at this point and here's jim and gene the legends of local radio you know right. and so he's like yeah, yeah i'm gonna let you get on the air tonight so i did prepare i mean i probably prepared prepared for three hours worth of talking and I was going to get about three minutes if I was lucky yeah. but I had all these charts and everything and, and Jim always you know, he made the comment of course in his voice but he's like oh like a Bob Ecker's got all this color coded charts I don't know what he's going to do with them all but it, <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> but he's got but, but he was very gracious to let me on the air and that was brought a, to you by yeah <laughs> yeah yeah al perry furniture you know <laughs> but uh no but jim was awesome too he just very gracious and, and did give me my first yeah. official air time doing sports and um so that, that was really cool too but that, that was what kind of came from that when i started kind of over preparing myself and then i worked with terry Ficarelli. Yeah. Who is another absolute legend in the broadcast game? I mean, what did he do? I'm glad you said legend. I thought you were going somewhere else. No, I mean, not, 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 not me. I mean, Fick had his fans, and, you know, you, you kind of were on one side or the other with Fick, I think. I love, yeah. I love him. And, and, and you know, just the way he called the games, you know, he, he used a lot of big words. You know, he used to say, you know, like, can't go truculently behind the net or whatever. Well, he had his own dictionary. Yeah, he had his dictionary, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, dictionary. Well, dictionary, yeah. Uh, what I love about Ficarelli and Terry is that he was the ultimate in prepared. Yeah. And, and I worked with him for two years as a production assistant up in the press box. And I used to record, you know, they, they would record the goals. Yeah. They had cassette tapes. And you just play the cassette, and then as soon as the goal scored, you pop the tape out, and then you'd cue it before the post game show, and then right. you'd play it back. And here's how it sounded when we took a one lead, and you'd play back the cassette. And then you'd hold a clipboard kind of angled so he could see it the whole game, the goals, the penalties so he could constantly reference it. But the man had so much information in his mind, and I, I remember looking at his sheet, he had a legal pad, and it's way smaller than telephone type. 
I mean, he had, he had scrawled so much information in tiny little letters and symbols that he used for, for each game. And he did games on Friday night, Saturday night, probably Sunday afternoon, right? I mean, he did a bunch of games. He didn't just, like, prepare for one game a week like I'm doing with the Big Reds. He had three four games yeah. a week. Yeah. And he knew more about the other team's players and forgot more about the other team's players than their own broadcaster probably knew about them. Right. He did so much, so thorough, well, you know, so we, they, amazing. Quick, quick story about Piccarelli. Piccarelli, uh, I, was a pro, I was a program director at WKBZ, and that was the very first place that he came to to do the, the Fury. While he was... So no, when he, when he first moved here to Muskegon, yeah, mm-hmm. and and uh, he had ordered. <laughs> it's funny. He had ordered what he wanted because he wanted an ISDM line and he wanted all this this special mm-hmm. stuff that he wanted to use. And this was was my job that I had to get this stuff for him because we wanted to have the fury end of you mm-hmm. see. And at first I'm thinking, well, that is arrogant, you know. But he knew what he wanted to do. He knew how he wanted it to sound. Yep. <clears throat> and he would, so he, he pretty much got what he wanted, and we were all uh, happy for it because the salesman did well with it and everything else. But the Fury, I, I followed Piccarelli all the way from there all the way through. And Paulie worked with Piccarelli. He did the, the, what was it, the Hotline Show? Yeah, down there at the Yeah, the Hotline Brandon. Show back then, and everybody, everybody's done that. Bill Marshall did it. Yeah. Um, but Dick and I used to go out to, to lunch all the time. Mm-hmm. And Vic had his own special toothpicks. <laughs> his, <laughs> his own special toothpicks. His own special toothpicks. And he asked me if I wanted one. It's like, no, I'm good. But he had all his little little toothpicks that he would use for, Were they for cinnamon everything. Pl- cinnamon flavor? Yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 they were oh, fresh. Oh, we know they were special. I but, love but the whole time we're talking at the I table after dinner or after lunch or whatever, he's jabbing man in his teeth with his toothpick, just going to town, you know, cleaning all that stuff out of there. But, you know. And there, here, here's another opportunity I had because of Terry. Uh, you know how he's the Iron Man, right, yeah. of broadcasting. Never missed a broadcast. Right. I don't know what his number got to. Probably close to 5,000 broadcasts without missing. You know, you're, you're, you're definitely, when you travel on the buses like the minor league hockey, and all, I mean, you're, you're going to be exposed to you getting sick and all yeah. the team gets sick and whatever. He never missed a game. Right. But one night he missed the hotline show. And I was in the studio. I was board hopping. Engineering. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, board yeah. hopping, exactly. right? LCS and yeah, yeah. I'm up in the studio up, upstairs. Yeah, you know, fighting the smoke clouds. <laughs> 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 and uh, Jim Schlichting was down there. Oh yeah. And Jim calls me and he's like, "I got someone coming to replace you in the studio. I need you to come down here. I don't think he's going to make the show tonight." Oh man. And I was thinking, "There's no way Vic's going to pull through. He always does, right?" Yeah. And so I'm like, "Okay." So then I think it was actually Mike. Mike Hansen. Mike Hansen. Yeah, so Mike Hansen. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Rest in peace, Mike. Um, so Mike comes down, takes my place. I head down to the arena, or the uh, rackets, and uh, I, I walk in there and I don't see him, you know, and usually he's the life of the party down there, oh, especially yeah. with the booster club there, yeah. and he was like an icon, you know, so I'm like, where is he at? And Jim's waving me over, he's in the back by the bar, and he's like, yeah, I think not doing he's got the flu, he's, just, he's really not, I don't think he's going to make it on the show tonight. Well, it happened to be the night that they were introducing Rich Crom as the coach. Oh. Mm-hmm. Right, so I knew a little bit about him because I was a huge hockey fan back then. So I knew, oh, Crom, right, he played for the New York Islanders. I remember him, you know, in the NHL and blah, blah, blah. So I had a little bit of information about him, but I didn't know a ton. And I was obviously prepared to do the show. I was prepared to play a few songs and the bumper music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Vic was basically said, yeah, I can't do the show. So I actually hosted that show once. Yeah. When Rich Crown was introduced as the new coach. And, and you made it. And I made it through the show. Yeah. I know mean, one thing that, uh, that just blew me away about Piccarelli is, is that, that once you became his buddy or friend, mm-hmm. yeah. he, he was, was a good guy. You were there. there for life. Always. And well, then if he invited you up to his where he press was. Box, yeah. To yeah. the press box. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was special. Yeah. But I've mm-hmm. never seen someone with mm-hmm. all the notes. Get in a zone. Oh, yeah. Calling the match. Calling. He would put his foot up, and he's just calling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Up and down the ice. You took that from him too. I probably stole yeah, that from him too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Pic- he's the one that gave me the, my favorite name too. The Your man nickname? Put the, yeah, the man that put the O on radio. I always loved that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He always say he did that. He always yeah. said that little. I remember I stole. Here's another thing I stole from him. I don't mind saying. 
uh, he would always be so complimentary of all the other people who were involved with the broadcast, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I remember, I remember he would always say about the person that was sitting in the studio, just board hopping, that's what we used to call it in the studio, right? Right. He would call it, he'd say, my engineer extraordinaire. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just like, that's such a, like, complimentary way to say that. You're just sitting back there pushing a couple buttons and playing commercials. But he, that to him, he made it sound like, oh, this guy's doing all these, you know. I remember I was engineering for him one time over rackets, and I, I spelled fruit for it wrong. Believe it or not, I spelled something wrong. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but but, oh, he, he spent maybe 10 minutes on that, how... <laughs> he had to be able to smell fruit for it. Yeah. You remember how you remember how bad he used to get when something went wrong with the board? The something was not right. Something was not coming real clear. And yeah. here's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Bob and I did it. They gave me the buy it at. Well, they had a little board there with the name, and somebody yeah. called in, and I spelled the name wrong. Uh, I always loved Teresa Corelli. Um, I got to know him really well because I was one of my best girlfriends. Um, remember Bruce Boudreaux? He was yep, my the very, first, very first Stephen Fury coach. His now wife, Crystal, was my dear girlfriend. And I would actually, when they go on the road, I was I, I would house guest for them. I would house guest. And what's really funny, when I would hang out at their house when they were there, all the players would come over and we would do the most innocent things you could ever imagine. When you when we say we broke out the Monopoly board, yeah. that's what we would do. <laughs> Steve Herman over here. Robin Bouchard over here. We're playing Monopoly. Ah! We're, and I'm not kidding. That is what we they do in their downtime. We would get in these like hours and hours long Monopoly tournaments. And Terry Ficarelli stopped by one time. He didn't play, but but I always remember how much of a gentleman he was to me because I I started singing the national anthem for for them a oh, few okay. times. Right. And he would always make make a point to come and say hello to me before I go on and sing. I mean, not right before, but he knew I was in. You know, he passed me, and he'd always come up. And he was always such a gentleman. He, he is. He is. He's just such a always gentleman. Always dressed nice. Always oh, dressed nice. Oh, always. And I, was, I, always I, and I always had to compliment yeah. him on, on his tan. I'm like, you have the best tan, Gary. And he loved it. I think he loved the fact that I, a lady was complimenting him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He did. I know. I knew Jerry enough to know he did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, bro I broke his heart once. Broke either, heart. either I broke his heart or I frustrated him, I don't know which. <laughs> <laughs> but when I told him my name was not Peter Tripp, the curly head, keep the third row after he's been following me that all that time. I said, oh, my yeah. name's going to be Paul Phillips. Yeah, he almost broke him apart. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 I said, oh, I'm in trouble now. Don't lie to Vic. No. <laughs> That's right. It will not go well. we got to get him on the show. That's what we got to do. we, we got to get a little thicker. He used to live, he was back in town, but now he be. Yeah, right he's doing another job. job. He's yeah. doing. He's calling hockey. Okay. All right. Ah, boy. I to remember where I, I just read an article. I think it was this last, this past season. Anyway, he was doing it maybe in Indianapolis or somewhere, but I, I'm guessing now. But okay. he wasn't working again recently. That's good. Because yeah, <laughs> his voice was was really getting hot, really getting. Oh, little rough, wasn't it? A little it? rough. Right. Right. After all I mean, those years and all those years. He would scream it. Oh, yeah, the skull. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. the skull. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. All right, so we got to take a break. We, go, we got to play a song or something. We've been talking for 40 minutes here. I mean, oh, <laughs> talking tune today. Yeah, yeah, yeah talking one tune today. Yeah. <laughs> so I thank everybody for coming in today, and uh, I had a great time. I hope everybody else had a great time. We're going to do trivia if we can Oh, yeah, we're going to come back. We're going to come back and do trivia. So we'll be back and we'll do trivia with Bob when we get back and if I can grab the right mouse here. Okay. Talking to you. I'll let you introduce yourself because I don't know yeah. what you're doing. All right. And it's, welcome back to Talking Tunes, and it is time for. As she sees it. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I need some reverb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I I'm on the list. a long echo. You know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to take the time because by the time people see this, I, I, I it, we're a fun show. We, we want to keep things like, but I just got to talk about the Kobe thing in that way. It's, it's a tragedy. Um, but I don't want to talk about that mistake. Yes, I want to say it said um, we're going to miss the mom both his daughter and the other eight people that were on the plane, yeah. helicopter. Um, what I 
what I want to talk about today is on a guy on Facebook. Because um, the police said, you know, we don't want to talk about the eight people until we know who the eight people are. And what he wanted to say, what he was trying to say was, is that they weren't paying enough attention, attention to the other eight and who they were. And he put this post on my post on my Facebook site. And you know who you are, and don't put that trash on my Facebook site again. Because do not put that trash on. Do not be political like that. It was a sad situation for all. Because once the eight people were discovered, they put the eight people there down. A lot of people lost their lives. A guy that was great to the community lost his daughter. And um, I, the Mambo, uh, who I thought was like in my top three, he wasn't one, um, but he was a great guy and um, a great father guy. And to everybody that was on that, that helicopter, it brings back down to this, why we do talking to him um, for, for fun, uh, friendship, to bring them back to good times. Um, but don't forget that the person that you see right now, you might not see tomorrow. So take advantage of being to smile. I was talking to a guy from the store, a uh, local store, and he said, I'm about to go nuts. And I, I, I put a post that uh, uh, Ali said. Ali said, um, you know, I'm not going to say hello to you. Um, because if I was a waiter or waitress, you wouldn't say hi to me. And we need to be nice to people. Um, this world has become too tribalism. And we need to learn how to laugh and laugh at each other and laugh at ourselves. And um, I, I just think that's important. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Back at Dog and Tunes, and Bob Ecker has the wonderful trivia. That's oh, right. Uh, our, our favorite segment. That's right. It's in demand. I mean, people have been bugging me all week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want more than two. Now we got Paul here too, who is Mr. Music Guy. Yeah. Now remember, this is how this works. So this is Who Am I trivia. Right. I'm going to start listing off some facts about um, celebrities, and uh, based on those, you, if you think you have a guess, you say stop, and then you give a guess. And if you don't get it right, we continue that round. And anyone else can guess, but then you're still in it. You know, the next fact comes out, you can you can try again. So you're not completely eliminated until you get to the very end. But you can only guess once per round. And last last week, Emily got one, and I got one, but Emily's not here to. Right. And when one thing I did get feedback on was Emily because she was off kind of where yeah Paul's right, right now. now. Yeah. Make sure you come closer to the mic because then when we actually gave the the winner, which actually was Whitney Houston, was the correct right. answer on that particular one. She was far enough away where people didn't hear it. We're all like, yeah, you got it right. And then we just continued on the game. <laughs> <laughs> people at home were like, who was it? Oh, no. you know, I didn't even so, hear it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so make sure, it. sure you're close to the mic if you're going to make a guess. But again. Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not very good at trivia, so I probably won't be making any guesses. Yeah. All right. Well, all right, here we go. Here's our first one of this week. I was born on October 18th, 1926 mm -hmm. in St. Louis, Missouri. All right, no guesses. Mm -hmm. While still a high school student, I was convicted of armed robbery and was sent to a reformatory. Mm. Stop. Is that Jerry Lee Lewis? That's a good guess, but it's not right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In 1953, I began performing with the Johnny Johnson Trio. <laughs> He's hurting, you know. He's hurting. hurting. He, he knows you should know it. <laughs> Fact number four. My break came when I traveled to Chicago in 1955 and met Muddy Waters, who suggested I contact Chess Records. Oh, Chuck, I'm sorry, stop. Chuck Berry? That's correct. Oh. It is Chuck Berry. <laughs> Chess Records, that gave it away. Yeah. yeah. Yep, I figured it might. I'll we had a few more facts if we needed them. I did an adaptation of the country song Ida Red. This song sold over a million copies and reached number one on the Billboard charts. I was one of the first musicians to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when it opened in 1986. And speaking of the Radio or Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 
three of my songs made their list of 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Johnny B. Good, Maybelline, and rock and roll music. And what was one of his, his number one song that couldn't believe, which he redid? Yeah, the only, one, the only one that made number one. Yeah, it was My Dingo Lane. My Dingo Lane. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That's a that lot. lot. Yeah. That is crazy. But you know what's, 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 what's funny about that? We, I had the 45 of uh, My Dingo Lane, and on the flip side of it is he does Johnny B. Good or something, but they... The crowd is going crazy, and they want to hear more of, of Chuck Berry. And the guy yeah. comes on and says, "No, we got to put Pink Floyd on next. We got to put Pink Floyd on." <laughs> <laughs> I had the same forty-five. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Did uh, you know he cool. had a six-inch pinky finger? <laughs> <laughs> no, I learned that backstage. Yeah, that that that's how he could hit those licks on that guitar the way he did. He wrapped that thing around there. He did. Uh, they actually measured it once. I knew he'd voice up when he heard Yeah, that. now he's, now he's yeah, involved. All right, <laughs> so Chuck Berry, Oscar is on the board with, with the win here. We got one more for you this week. And uh, this one, the first fact is our group was formed in 1958. Pass. Yeah. Our first band name was the Rattlesnakes. Huh. Pass that one. Is it a really good guess, but no. You guys have really good guesses. <laughs> I mean, you're not like way out in left field. Yeah, they were last week when I was guessing. Especially now with this next one. Although from England, we moved to Australia and achieved our first chart success with a song called Spicks and Specks. Man. Fact number four. We returned to the UK in 1967, working with producer Robert Stigwood, who began promoting us to a worldwide audience. Oh, stop, I think. That's the Bee Gees. Oh. It is the Bee Gees. What? Oh, two for two. What? They had a name like well, the, what, the Rattlesnakes? Yeah, when they first started. What? I can't imagine that. Yeah, they first started. Here's a couple more facts. Our second British single was issued to radio stations with a blank white label listing only the song title. Many DJs immediately assumed it was the Beatles and put it into heavy rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, the marketing. Uh, and then as our band features three brothers. Yeah. That yeah. was where it was going to start getting a little easier. Yeah. We sold more than 220 million records worldwide. We were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997. Only Elvis Presley, the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Garth Brooks, and Paul McCartney have sold more than our band. And of course, it is. And Barry's still writing, as far as I know. Barry did. He's the only one still alive. Still alive, yeah. yeah. The Bee Gees had more charted songs than Elvis, but Elvis had more than number one songs. There's uh, that's a trivia question for you. The rattlesnakes, man. That rattlesnakes. That's not something not I need to know. Your sexy little genre. I go back to the I go back to the Massachusetts and Holiday and yeah. Yeah, like in the sixties. I started a joke That's when I, I started a joke, yeah. Yeah. I love somebody. Right. I love somebody. That's a great one. Well all goes two for two this week. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Again, we have no prize money no in this station. Hey. We, we only hand out punishments. We don't have any rewards. It's <laughs> yeah. all went to my head anyway, so we're I'll good. I'll make sure a minute you're ready to ride. What's the prize? A minute. A minute. Oh, is there a, a minute. You got a dollar there? You pulled it out of the wallet. You just split a minute with Paul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, hey, uh, oh a five. A five, five dollar bill. Wow. I'm impressed. Yeah. Anyway. So thank you so much for joining Talk, Talking Tunes. We have thanks to Paul, our P Peter Tripp, the crew in the third row. Bob uh, Becker. Gene Drew. What? Oh, about Gene Drew? Gene Drew. Drew. Yeah. 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 Seven seven three two nine four eight six four four, and uh, her email is drew d r e w jean j e a n n e at gmail dot com. All right, and uh, G man always a pleasure. Mr. Oh, Gregory T. Roberts. All right, uh, Kathy get better, Emily get better. Well, yeah, Emily too. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, Emily has to come come here next week and uh, try to take my my honor away from me. She has to get. Should be hard. <laughs> <laughs> What's left of it? Yeah. It's in shambles. And thanks again, Berta. Berta had some of the great behind the scenes stories for oh, us. Today. I just rambled too much, you guys. Thanks for letting me ramble with you. Well, that's what we do here. <laughs> you know, I like it fitting so well. Yeah. That's what we do here. I've been sitting here all this time and thinking and thinking and thinking. And you heard himself. So. Now I remember hearing you on the radio. What? Really? Yeah. You listen to my show? Yes. Aww. Somewhere down the road, I remember her now. <laughs> what a way to end the show. Oh, that's pretty good for you. He's never heard me on the radio. I've been going up for oh, over four years, years, so there you go. I feel really honored. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously. Well, <laughs> uh, all right, I'm very interested. We're going to do another four hour show here. Talk to Jude. Everybody have a great day. That was fun. Talking to <laughs> Talking